All right, welcome back to the much anticipated, you don't know this, but <laughs> pretty much everyone in the comments, uh, they were unanimous in saying, that was totally unfair. You gave Brian that little tiny saw. Mm -hmm. If he would have had a proper saw, i.e. the silky katana boy, he would have crushed you. So, mm -hmm. I have a surprise for you. You haven't seen this yet, right? No, I have not seen the katana boy. Not, I haven't even looked at pictures on the internet of it. <laughs> it's quite impressive. Oh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> that is the it, it, metric system. So this is good because, as you guys know, Brian is all about the metric system. Absolutely. So that is, it's got something 500. It's, like, it's metric. 500 centimeter would be my guess. Uh, who knows? I mean. 500 centimeters. Uh, so that is good for you. So that is a big saw. But that's not the biggest one. Oh, they have a, a larger they, one. They have one larger. Th it was so expensive. It was uh, $300 for the larger one, which was only a couple inches longer. So I thought, well... That's what we have. So what do you think that your chances are of uh, cutting through, what do you got, 12 incher here? Yeah. Uh, versus uh, the American Buxa. You know, I think my chances are definitely better, Cody. Um, I'm still skeptical though. So, you know, I'm gonna give it my best run and this time I'll be fresh because we wouldn't have done two in a row. Right. So I think it's, uh, I think it's gonna be a little bit uh, more of an even contest this time. Okay, so I have something to commemorate the, uh, the, uh, the occasion. Uh, since you will be representing Japan, uh, well, here I'll, I'll you, take my hat. Can off. you put that on there? I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to make it make it special for you. Hold on here. Yes. And I uh, will be wearing a, an, a a real Stetson cowboy hat. So I thought that uh, it would be a truly an East versus West. Very good. Yes. Uh, and uh, we'll see who comes out on top. Are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do, so we've got a big, uh, I think this is lodgepole pine. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. Uh, we're gonna cut side by side. Brian will cut from this side. Uh, there's not a lot of taper difference in the short the short span here. I'll cut on this side and uh, we'll, we'll uh, see who can get through first. Mm -hmm. who, do you who do you think's gonna win? Well, it was pretty close last time. It was really close it last time. It was really time. close. And last time you were using, do right. I have it here? Yeah, this one here. Yes. Show the difference between these two. So that's that's significant. Yeah. It, it's the handle though. Yeah. That's an impressive saw, isn't it? This is really quite sizable. It feels and it feels really great. I really just want to swing it around. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I, I was I was not prepared for its how big it was when I opened it because you just can't tell online. But yeah. All right, let's move the camera and we'll uh, jump into it and, and see what happens. Okay, so is the height, you like the height? Is that good for you? This is good for me. Okay. This is going to work. So we're, we're, we'll cover both of the blades with uh, uh, some WD-40 here. You've got yours covered there? You want I got little, mine. I'll you want a little bit more or are you good? I think I'm good. Okay. Are you feeling the, feeling the warrior spirit? Absolutely. It flows through me. Yes. Okay. Uh, and no knots under there? I'm going to come a little bit close to you here right there. Yep. Okay. Yeah, this looks good. All right, so I'll be representing America. Brian will be representing Japan. Uh, glorious Nippon. We are going to go, we'll go hard as we can. Okay, you call it, Brian. Each knee, son. Oh. Even there's a learning curve. <laughs> it doesn't work good! <laughs> oh, I'm getting tired! Oh, it's not good for me!
This is your path for the wind. Oh my goodness. So we got a, there's quite a few folks that took us to task for being so unfit. But when I checked their channels, I didn't see any videos of anyone else of who them cutting <laughs> with hand saws, but I'm sure that they're out there. I just must have overlooked it. Wow, that was a huge difference. It was, uh, I was what, halfway through? Not much more than that. I got you by a good margin that time. Maybe, maybe a little, maybe a little bit more than half. Look how clean that cut is compared to the, uh, the cross cut saw. Let's come in close and look at that because we have the cross cut cut on that one over there. Right. Can you show the teeth on that, Brian, how coarse they are? That's the thing that I noticed. You know, we talked about the disadvantage of these Japanese saws is not being able to file them. But I think a guy could file this one. These are yeah. big enough, I think. Yeah, they're big enough in there that I, I think that it could be done. And I don't believe that there's much set or no set in those at all. There is a little set back sideways, but I think a guy could, could file that. But look how smooth that cut is. I mean, it's even, you know, with those big teeth and going really aggressive, I mean, it's really, really smooth. Uh, we'll contrast that with the cross cut and over on the other log. Let's go take a look at that. Now this is the log that we cut, uh, was it last Thursday? Look, that was with the, the same cross cut. So look how coarse that is. Yeah, you can, you can feel the rings on this one. Yeah, it's a huge, and this is the one you and Jack cut this right here, right? Right. Yeah, super, super coarse. Almost like it tore, it's torn the wood, the fibers out as it went. Yeah, you've got these really distinct peaks and valleys here. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, so let's wrap up with, with our conclusion and uh, the experience altogether. Still catching my wind here. So what was what was your the experience with that versus the uh, the big boy, the smaller one? Well, this one, the teeth are new. I mean, this is the first time we've used the saw, right? You right. So they're very grabby, and you know, as you can see, they cut really, really quickly. But it did make for a bit more effort while I was cutting. I felt that this saw was actually harder to pull than the smaller silky saw. Which the teeth are probably about half half that size. Yeah, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. Yeah. So these teeth are a lot more aggressive. So not just the size of the saw, but also the size of the teeth. And uh, the yeah, it seems like they're taking a little bit bigger bite out of the wood. So in defense of this saw, of course, you know, this saw, this is a vintage saw uh, that I sharpened, you know, maybe six months ago. It hasn't had a tremendous amount of use, but it's, it's not, you know, at its peak performance, but even if it was, I highly doubt in this particular type of wood uh, mm -hmm. that it could compare with that. I guess my only question with that is not using it is this saw, as we've talked about before, is, is pretty ergonomic. It works with the, with the body pretty good. It's, uh, we talked about that, it's a, it's a whole body workout. You yep. can get into it. Um, I guess the question that I would ask you with little as you've, at least you've used it and I haven't is, mm -hmm. Could a guy, could back in the day before the chainsaw, could a guy went out and fell medium-sized timber with that, with that design, or do you think it would be too fatiguing? I still think it would be too fatiguing. Yeah. You know, it's, I think it's a good saw, but I don't think it allows you to use enough of your body. Too, too much arms? It's too much arms and you know, shoulders. You know, it relies, maybe, maybe there's a technique to using these that I'm not aware of, but, you know. It, it just seems like it's too much upper body and it doesn't allow you to use the rest. It seems um, I really ideally suited for uh, pruning mm -hmm. uh, and bucking, maybe bucking so much. I, I don't know how good it would be horizontally. Right. Uh, it would be interesting to, to do a test if you can recover from this one these days. <laughs> is We could go take a couple of Doug firs and we could uh, put this up against an axe. And go at it and see which what, what how which one would be the quickest yeah. for falling for felling uh, a tree it would be kind of interesting. I, but I wonder how it would be to work horizontally. Uh, not that these are perfect horizontally. I mean they're mm -hmm. they're challenge they've got their own challenges as well. But it's very it's a very interesting concept how the Japanese that have been doing woodworking I mean far longer than the West uh, have come up with that design of a saw that cuts on the pole. Mm -hmm. Uh, versus uh, a saw, the American saws, which cut on the push and the pull. Uh, it's, it's kind of an interesting philosophy. Mm -hmm. I wonder where it, where it comes from and which one is, is well, better. Something I'm noticing right now as well, Cody, is that um, I'm not sure what the correct term is, but the, I guess the profile of the blade 
that is flat along the bottom. Is it? So no, there's you, no curve. There's in no it at all. curve. So if you sight down it, it's perfect. All the oh, teeth are in the same cutting plane. Yes. Whereas this one, it curves, I believe. Yeah. This is, this has a rocker to it. If you hold it sideways, you can compare the two. Yeah, and that's got a flat. That, that's true. Yeah. That's true because I do have Japanese pruning saws that do have uh, the rocker, but it's the opposite of this. It goes this way. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Anyway, that was kind of a fun test. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. You're welcome. And uh, if you guys have any ideas how you would like to see us put the the good katana boy up against uh, either axes or American saws, any anything that would be interesting, put that in the comments, and uh, if we can do it, we'll uh, we'll uh, try to make that happen. I think that'll be fun. Sounds fun. So how are you? I, I showed some of the video of you with your dirt bike accident. Oh, yeah. how, how were you a little sore after that, or are you I, okay? I was a little sore for a day, but I feel like I've recovered now. All right. That was a, a couple of spirited moments there. <laughs> so uh, Brian and I, we're gonna head out tomorrow, uh, and we're gonna go on a ride, a new place that we haven't been before. Um, I'll bring the camera along and we'll uh, we'll try to get a little better footage than we did last time, but uh, That's it. So thanks for watching click the thumbs up if you guys haven't already and We'll see you on the next video All right, yeah. should we call it a day? Huh, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Oh man, that's that's rough <laughs> to say I was a little surprised of how I guess how dominating uh, the Japanese, the Katana Boy was. I, I thought it would be a little bit closer than that, but Brian actually just crushed me. Something that we noticed uh, that we kind of missed in the video was that those were two very different woods. Of course, the first one that we cut, or the, or the crosscut section that I showed with the, uh, the crosscut saw, uh, was a white fir, which is a really, really soft wood. This second one that we cut was actually a lodgepole pine. Now, lodgepole pine makes some of the finest firewood in the world. It's um, not like the light. You know, when you think of pine, you think of this fast burning, super hot, lightweight uh, wood, uh, but it's not. If you go back there and look at that, and as we noticed, look at the growth rings on that tree. I mean, that thing's got to be 100 years old. It is tight, not. It's very, very dense. It was much more difficult to cut. What I was wondering, or the both of us were wondering, was how would this test be in something that was green and, and soft, like a, a red fur? And we, we might have to do that again, but it was kind of fun. It was kind of interesting. So I, I'm, I'm really impressed with that saw. I thought that it was, well, I thought that it was a bit of a gimmick. And maybe it is, is to a certain extent, but it is a saw that uh, I think would be really useful just for, if nothing else, just for the reach uh, to be able to have a long saw like that that you can reach up with that long handle would be a wonderful limbing saw. So I'll uh, we'll do more on that in, in the future. Uh, but I think uh, for around the house, you know, as as kind of maybe a poor man's chainsaw or a substitute for it. Um, and I think even even in some instances that it would be better. Um, it's uh, it's it's pretty amazing. So those are pretty expensive. When I went to the Silky site, they were two. I think the list on those were two fifty nine. And I balked at that. I'm like, there's no way I'm paying $2.59 for a folding handsaw. But when I went on Amazon, they were, I, I think what I paid for mine was $130. It was right around $130, which I think for the quality of it and after seeing it is is, is fair. It's pretty reasonable. It's a very well-made saw. So I'm going to put my favorite silkies, um, favorite folding silkies in my store. If you're if this is something that you'd like to get or take a look at or interested in buying, uh, you can go to wranglermart.com and I'll put those there as, as a link to the subject heading. I like the little ones, the little pack saws that I keep in my dirt bike bag. Um, the um, I'm not a super fan of the big boy, um, but I think that I, what we need to do is we need to get their hand saws. Their hand, their fixed hand saws with the she's. Um, those I think those are where it's at. I think those are probably from what I've under what I've read and what I've been told by a lot of you guys that are arborists is that they are um, top notch and as good as good as you can get. So, uh, but I still like them. I, I think that they're they're not ideal. Of course, the fixed blade knife is better than a folding always, uh, but the convenience of the folder, um, you know, you, it's all it's all give and take. Everything is about compromise. But uh, click the thumbs up if you enjoyed these videos, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.